Okay, we're going to talk about e-transmit. Uh, that is uh, one way to type it in. The other way is to uh, search for it up here. Uh, it's in the publish section. <coughs> e-transmit. Okay, so what what it what it is? There you go. It says you have to save your drawing before you continue. Do you want to save the drawing? Yeah, yes, I do. Thank you. All right. So what it is is uh, another way of collaborating or, I suppose, communicating with other consultants and clients and that sort of thing. Um, it may even be a way of archiving this particular drawing at the end of a job. Uh, okay. So it transmit. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, it's, uh, you know, we, 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 as we have got an extra thing here, we can we don't have to use it transmit. We can say, well, you know, you can have this drawing called extra demo. I do remember I brought in a couple of extras, in this case only one. Um, I will email that to you as well. So you can manually go and find other files and put them together. Uh, what inevitably happens is that you forget one. Right? Also what this does, uh, in addition to just remembering what files were used, is also um, you know, what plotter configurations might be used. You know, it's already realizing that I used the DWFX uh, .pc3 file before, so it's going to include it just in case the person you're sending it to uh, hasn't got it in their AutoCAD system. All right, so they can uh, use it. It says some external references were found. I want to include those as well. You have the option to exclude this if the guy that you are giving this to, um, uh, you know, you've been communicating with them before, and you know they're using AutoCAD. More than likely, they'll have this. So you might not want to bother them with this, and you say, okay, well, look, I'll tick that off. Don't really need that. I'll send it to you, you know, ten times already this month. I'm sure you've got it, right? So, um, in addition, you have an option to um, add more files if you want to. Um, now, uh, you have got this option here, which I'm not going to go into it. But you can modify this. At the moment, we're using the AutoCAD standard transmission um, or transmittal setup. But you can create a number of setups here, including new ones, uh, for certain. Um, or different clients, I suppose. You can have different different setups. Uh, if we modify it, what do we get? For example, for certain clients, you might know that they haven't got the latest version, so you might want to always make it convert the drawing to 2004 automatically when you transmit. You don't want to save it to 2004, but you want an e transmit to do it at the time of sending through email. Right? Um, you might want to um, have a folder where everything is set up. This might be useful for if you want to, if it's a big job, you want to print it to CD or USB. It just creates a folder, puts everything in there. Uh, at the moment, it's set up for zip. Oh, sorry, set to a folder there. But also, you can define which folder you, you know, the transmittal file will be. File folder is that? Okay, so if I go there, you can just name a folder. But at the moment, it was on zip. Now I've made it into a set of files, so it's not zipped. Um, or you can have a self-extracting one. This one you can't email because email uh, clients won't accept exe files. All right, so most likely you want to zip it all up, and this is the format I want you to send to me. All right, so you can also make it so it does certain actions automatically, like it sends it automatically. You can make it so it binds the external references, and then what sort of bind does it do? Does it do an inset bind or does it do a bind? All right, what is bind? Is something on our little list to talk about as well. All right, bind can be done manually or through this e transmit. Okay, and I'll show it to you in a minute what the manually one does. It's a bit easier to explain later. But note that there's two types of binding this thing. Basically, what it does, it strips away the XREF and brings the XREF straight into this file. So there's only one file that has the external references in it. Uh, but they're not external references anymore. They're basically blocks. It inserts the external reference as a block. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, uh, moving right along. That's uh, probably about the main stuff you want to know. I'll just cancel that. I don't want to change that. But you can see you might want to have a few different ones for different types of clients you might have. All right? For you, we'll stick to the standard how it was. Um, we'll close that. We don't even want to go there. I just went in there. Um, that's fine. So really, uh, yes, you do want to add a file. I did tell you that uh, you want to email me the DWFX as well. Uh, it's not picking that up. So I want to put that in manually, OK? This will show me that you know how to do this, and you remember to do this. So I remembered where I've put it, um, except I, I've got problems getting to it. Um, uh, it's um, Where's my little, here it is, that one there. 
So I want to add that in, so it's additional files. In addition, it will write a little text file to go with the email or the zip that explains what things have been added and where to put them, what folders for the recipient, okay? So it tells me the size, it's three files, 278K. Um, what is the edit file, is it? Yeah, so let's go with, oh, look at that, we've got an email from Mr. Amos, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go uh, OK, I suppose, and see what happens. All right, it's asking me, where do you want to put the zip file? All right, let me just put it back in my um, uh, libraries. Let's go to my documents and give it a name of some sort and save it. Oh, you cannot save uh, to the folder specified. as it. It's not an extra system location. What are you talking about? Uh, what folder am I? Okay, let's put it in the uh, H here. OK, he likes that one, whatever. All right, then you just got to find that file and email it to me. And that's all I want you to do for project two, really. All right? Now, um, if we've got a few minutes, I want to just finish it off with a bind. Uh, yes, we have. So let's do that. So uh, if we go to the layers, um, I want to go into the layer command. I want to show you, I did show you this before, how the layers have got this little vertical line between them and, and the prefix is the name of the drawing that has been externally, externally referenced in here. All right, The layers that actually we can use and have been created in this drawing are only these two layers in this instance. You might have three for example. All right, So um, what it will do when we bind it, it will bring these layers in here and it will, they'll be called a little bit different. All right, So let's, let's do that. Uh, if we go uh, xref just to show you here. Uh, we can see there's the external reference file there, okay? All right, I'll just minimize this and we'll see what happens in the future. All right, let's go, actually I'll leave that there because um, I want to do something with this. If I right click here and I go to bind, which is the same bind that we had in the e-transmit, do I want to bind it or, in, or insert it? Oh, years ago we only had bind, we didn't have an insert option. Let's go with the bind. All right, if I go to the layers, which I, have I still got the layers? Somewhere, you know, layers. Okay, look what happened to the layers. They've got a dollar sign, zero dollar sign, where it used to be just a vertical line or the pipe symbol. Um, now they've got this dollar sign. So um, it, it still keeps the layer structure uh, the same, except it puts, you know, I can actually use them now. I can make them current and actually I can draw in them now as well. All right, so it's made them usable. Uh, they're part of this drawing now. Uh, this is only useful, for example, if you may be bringing, I mean, one use of this maybe, um, if you uh, got two different stages of a building, uh, initially they might be externally referenced in, and you know, the, you've know got a wall in each one, all right? Uh, however, you wanted to, for some reason, have a wall brick in one uh, to be blue, and obviously red in this one. Uh, and you want to maintain that color, all right? So when you externally reference it and then bind it, uh, if you um, do the bind option and not the insert option, then you get to keep that other wall. In theory, that would be normally if I just replicate it. Uh, this might be called wall or brick, if it was called that. Just so. so now all of a sudden I've got two wall bricks, one here and one here, and they're both different colors. All right. All right. That's that one. Uh, I'll just close that. And I'll undo what I just did. Undo, undo. Um, I think we got it back. Okay. So now uh, our layers are how they were. Now, if I go to this thing here now, and I right click and I bind, and I do the insert option and go OK, for a start, that disappears. There's no more XREF, just like it did before, but I didn't show it to you. All right. So there's no more XREFs in here. This is a block. All right. Uh, and just leaves in this drawing. It hasn't done anything with the file that's sitting on your hard disk. That other file is still there, but it's just inserted it in here as if you have inserted a block from here. All right, whereas before we did it from here. All right, this is an external reference. All right, so let's have a look at the layer structure now. So if I go to here and I go to my layers and I click on that, Here's my layer structure. No dollar signs, no prefixes, nothing is maintained. Those layers have come in here uh, as they are. And if one of those layers, as I said before, was a wall brick wall, um, and the color was blue, it would take the properties of the wall brick that was happened to be in the host drawing already. 
So you just, whatever is in here, overwrite what's uh, in the XREF. So it will be read as well. And it's just basically one layer. It's not two layers anymore. All right, so that's how that basically works. All right, so it's, it's much neater this way. It's simpler. Um, but the other way maintains the layer structure of the original XREF as well. All right. This one here, you have no hint that it used to be an XREF. Uh, whereas the other one, you can look at the layer structure and, and you'll get an idea that it probably came from an XREF originally because it's got those funny looking layer names. All right? All right, so that's um, the um, yeah, that's the binding uh, option there. Uh, we've done the updating paths and whatever else in here. Uh, so we basically have covered uh, our third week. Um, yeah, and you're done. Any questions at all uh, that are relating to, that need to be recorded? I must verify. Okay, we'll stop this now.